Get out. Hello, tankers and tankettes. It's been at, oh, at least a week since my last mouse replay, so, you know, it's about time. This is actually an 8.11 one, and this one's kind of special, because look who else is in a mouse. Yep. <laughs> and, and look who isn't in a mouse. Oh, fosh. Come on, man. Come on, you're just letting the side down. Anyway, Himmelsdorf. This is, I mean, if there was a button you could press that meant every single mouse game that you played, you got Himmelsdorf. That would just be so gloriously OP. Alas, no such button exists, but, you know, sometimes I like to stay up nights dreaming about it. I like to stay up dreaming about it? I don't even know. I don't even know. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, the fact that we've got two mouses, that could present some interesting possibilities, because it's... Well, twice the number of mouses? <laughs> anyway, we're going to go to the Banana Street because that is the natural place to go. And if you look at the enemy team, you'd expect there to be at least one thing, if not maybe the enemy tank destroyers there as well. But, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see when we get there. And the thing about the mouse is, along with a lot of the tier 10 heavies, it's got a 400 meter view range. And if it weren't for the fact that there's a lot of other useful equipment that you can use for the mouse, I'd actually probably be using optics for this, but there's just too many other useful things. So I'm turning my turret in preparation for side scraping out and having a peek. And as you can see, there's there's nothing doing really. I'm not taking any fire at all. My sixth sense hasn't gone off. So, yeah. That is information in and of itself. The lack of information is in fact information. So Sircon is just going to press up and I'm going to follow, except well, that's a cheeky little 1375, who is in fact going after our 1375. Now I might just get, there we go, the back of this turret. I save our 1375, so there we go. Sircon's continuing to press up. Still not attracting any fire. I mean, they must know that we're doing it, and oh, hello, finally, something, a 215B. And he must be worried, because he's got a pair of mouses to deal with, and I know that thing's got a good rate of fire, but on the other hand, this is 6,000 hit points worth of, you know, tier 10 heavies. Oh, look at that, look at that fire, though. That shell was worth the cost. Now, I know there's stuff around there, so I'm going to peek, and yep. There's a waffle. So let's get some angle on the side of this tank. Now I know I can hurt him, and I've got a good chance of bouncing his shells. And look, he's on fire as well! Dee -hee. Yeah, clearly I had the incendiary ammo loaded for this particular match. He's backing way the hell off. I'm going to try and put one in this E50M, but uh, to no avail. Yeah, I maybe could have aimed that a little more carefully, but again, that was not... This is not a sniping gun, really. Now, they've got a lot of stuff on the hill, and that's why there wasn't really anything here, because they've got a lot of stuff on the hill. So we've got to press our advantage and clean up whatever's here, and then maybe try and get up on the hill and get those guys from behind. So there's a Centurion 7-1 running around here somewhere. The E100 is to our right. He's just taken a hit. Uh, oh! The 5120's come back as well, so they know we're here. Hello, Centurion! Oh, that one didn't catch on fire, alas. It'd be nice if he had. Now, this is a bad situation for a mouse in that I've got basically targets on either side, so I initially turned for the 5120, but he's actually backing off. The Centurion has spotted that I'm doing this, maybe, so I've got to turn all the way back, and I just fire just that moment too early, and you know, the ground isn't going to be fighting back anytime soon, but yeah. So I've got to get this Centurion, because otherwise he's going to be a thorn in our sides. There's still an E50M around on this flank as well, but the rest are just all on the hill, basically. So it's a matter of getting this guy and boop! Oh, that never gets old. That never gets old. Well, the thing with the mouse is, because it's nearly 200 tons, although it doesn't go very fast, that 200 tons counts for a lot, so you can just give someone the gentlest nudge and kablammo, suddenly they don't have a tank anymore. 
And then we see that noob Fosh in his T-54. I, I mean, the, uh, to be fair to him, the T-54 is so underpowered that, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a very difficult thing when you've also got a, a, a two teammates in mouses, because they're, they're obviously going to be doing much better than you are when you're in such a, a weak tank as the T-54. Anyway, circon uh, has got some trouble here. He's actually got two auto loaders to deal with, and he's angling fairly well, but the mouse does not do that well in these kind of circumstances, because, oh, look at this, they can just... And again, someone rams themselves to death on a mouse, this time to Fosh 155. Here I should have... I was just going for the shot. I should really have tried for his axle, but I didn't. And I, I don't know why I didn't try for his axle. But it would have pinned him, and we could have just finished him off without having to actually climb the hill after him. But as it was, we do have to climb the hill after him, and that's going to take a little while in, in, in a mouse. Now I've gotten kind of lucky, Circon has taken the brunt of the damage, and most of it was in that last encounter. We have lost the hill, we're actually now 10-11. There's T1-10-5 who is low health, and my initial thought is I'm going to side scrape here. But this is a really awkward corner for side scraping, so I'm just going to basically have to take the hit and absorb the damage if there's going to be any. Circon's actually going to go to the cap along with that E100. And although in theory we could take them, I do have full hit points. Uh, I mean, we, sometimes... It, uh, personally, I think I would have preferred just to keep capping, but the fact that I'm trying to chase around other tanks in a mouse, it could have gone very badly. So that E100 gives me lovely access to his lower front plate. His heat shells don't do him any good. That's an IS-7 with a relatively high amount of health, though. And I actually go forward to try and... There we go. I nudge him, take off some damage, but it actually tracks me rather than tracks him, which was the goal. And then I do a little ass ram into the E100. Circon finishes him off, and can I get one last shot into this guy before we cap? I I'd have really rathered we didn't cap, to be honest. At least that I could have done a bit more damage on this guy. But uh, no, I do get one last shot, but unfortunately it bounces. And it's only right at the end that I actually finally take some damage myself. So... Yeah, that was quite a fun match. You don't get to play in a mouse platoon very often. Mostly when I'm playing in a platoon with Fosh and Circon, it's they're playing other tier 10s uh, that aren't mouses. It's very unusual just generally to see a mouse platoon, but a mouse platoon on Himmelsdorf, I mean, that's just god mode practically. As you can see, myself and Circon did quite a big amount of damage. I actually had a high caliber medal there. I did 5.6k damage. Circon did 3.9k damage, we had 3 kills apiece, Fosh, oh, Fosh, such noob, 1200 damage, T54, but like I've said, it's so underpowered, you know, I I'm sure he did his best, bless him. <laughs> wow, wow, I, I just, uh, anyway, <laughs> let's move swiftly on. So, uh, yeah, that, that was that was fun. Unfortunately, I don't have Circon's potential damage, um, but my own potential damage was 4.2k, so that was pretty nice. Uh, 12 shots fired, 10 hits, 9 pens. Most of them went where they're supposed to, and that's the thing with a mouse gun. It, it, if you're aiming carefully enough, you can you can make things pen. The penetration isn't that bad on this gun, but it's certainly lacklustre compared to a lot of the other tier 10 heavies. But if you think about it, some of them really aren't that far behind. Uh, this gun's got, what, 248? The IS-7's only got 250. Uh, the T125 is, what, 257? So, there's not that big of a range there, but then, obviously... The E100 lags quite far behind with 235 with its regular pen on the the the, uh, the 150 centimeter gun. But it's maybe not surprising you see so many of those using heat because the regular AP pen is just so bad, and that one is bad. But the mouse, I don't think it is actually that bad without that 128. I think it's actually pretty reasonable. So yes, mouse. That was actually a fun game. I quite liked that. Uh, it's a pity we don't platoon more often. I would enjoy it, but I don't think the mouse is really Circon's cup of tea. I think he, he plays it occasionally for a bit of novelty, but he always prefers a, either a bit of mobility or a really big gun. And the mouse doesn't really do 
either of those things. Although, like I've said, the gun isn't actually that bad at all. So, if you like this replay, you can hit the like button, you can leave a comment below, you can subscribe to my channel, and of course, as always, stay tuned for more.